the hardest medical degrees that you can ever do. I suppose it's a little bit like imposter syndrome. You need to be able to pick up on those signs really, really quickly. So how does someone with autism manage in a degree that's as full on and as stressful and as difficult as one like this? The voices pull between you and me Yes, it's true, I'm falling for you But I won't rush this love I can wait even if it's hard to take One moment is enough I will be standing here right by your side I will be standing here to the end of time Good afternoon guys, welcome back to another video, if you're new here welcome and if you are stopping by for another video thank you so much for returning. If you are new here I'm Faye, I'm 31 and I am a second year adult nursing student and I am autistic. I know I look scruffy as usual, my hair's scraped up and no makeup on and I've got my comfies on but I am sat down, I have been doing some studying, I have just tried out my new face wash and um, for those who don't know I do have rosacea and I have a wedding coming up which is my wedding and I need to get my skin sorted for then and care I this morning and so are these little guys my foamies that I was telling you about from Flare Audio so I'm going to try them because if you didn't know I have tried earbuds at night time and I ended up in the emergency room not long ago because uh, it got stuck, it broke off and got stuck in my ear. I'll leave a little link up here so you can see that video. But yes, I've had a nightmare with earbuds so I'm going to try these tonight and hopefully these will work just as well. So I will let you know how I get on with them. So today's video I am actually going to be talking to you about what it's like being autistic and being a student nurse. I actually get questions on this quite a lot on my inbox on uh, my Instagram and I get people, I'm, I've got a straw by the way because I've got my Invisalign out while I drink coffee so I know I don't technically need a straw but um, because the attachments are white I don't really want them staining so just to keep everything nice and clean I use a straw. But yeah I get questions all the time I have people who are autistic sending me inboxes quite often actually on Instagram and um, when they've been out on placement and they've struggled on placement and ask what my coping mechanisms are, ask what support I have in place, ask how I manage, ask what my routine is so I thought I'd just come and sit down and just do a video with you because it just makes sense obviously this video is covering about being autistic and being a student nurse but it can help other student nurses who are not autistic as well so make sure you stick around if that is the kind of video you are wanting to watch make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any more uploads and let's just get into the video guys so i'm just getting comfortable on the floor because i've been sat at that desk for ages since half past nine this morning again so just want a little break away from there so i do apologize i've been sat in the same position as i was last time on my last video but because of the lighting, because of the time of year, there's not many places in the house that are bright enough to do these videos. And I apologise if I do keep looking down, but I've got a few notes written down because I didn't want to miss anything off. So today I'm just going to run through some pros with you and some cons with you about being autistic and being a student nurse and being a student in general. Some common questions that I get quite often. So, can you be a nurse if you're autistic? What support is there? What support do I get out on placement? Is there anything that I need to disclose? Do I have to disclose it? Will people want me to look after them if I'm autistic and they know? Do people treat you differently if they know? Do people treat you differently until they know? It's it's a whole load of questions that I get all the time. My routine, how do I manage on clinicals? All that kind of stuff. So it's all coming up, so please bear with me. I have got a little bit to get through with you and I promise I'll try and cover everything. But as usual, if there's stuff that I haven't covered, stuff that I've missed out, or anything extra that you really want to know, just leave it in the comment section below and I will answer that as soon as I can. So, as we all know, the nursing degree itself is known and renowned of being one of the hardest medical degrees that you can ever do. That's a fact. It's out there. It is so hard. And I know that myself and other YouTubers and other people, influencers on Instagram and other social media platforms, do our best to try and incorporate you in a, into our lives to show you what it's like. But honestly, it is so much more stressful than it even looks on camera. So it is a very full on degree. So how does someone with autism manage in a degree that's as full on and as stressful and as difficult as one like this? Pro number one for me personally 
is that those who are autistic are very, very good at following rules. We do not like to break rules, we do not like to go against the rules, we do not like to go against things that we are told we need to do, hence where a lot of vulnerability comes from. So this is really good for nurses because obviously you are taking care of someone's life, you need certain rules in place, you need to know rules, policies and procedures, you what you can and can't do, what your limitations are, what you should and shouldn't be doing, all of that good stuff is essential when you are wanting to be a nurse. So someone who's autistic, who is very rule bound, is gonna make a cracking nurse. A little bit similar to following the rules is following instructions. A lot of people who are autistic like myself, and I keep saying a lot of people because I don't wanna say that everyone on the spectrum is the same because they're not, but the majority of people who are autistic are very, very black and white with their thinking. So instructions come as a little bit of second nature to us. If we're told to do something, it's kind of a little bit monkey say, monkey do. It is with me anyway. I pick things up very, 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 very quickly and I retain them very, very well. So if you're given instruction of how to put an IV together, how to administer certain medication, how to turn a patient in bed, how to do all the checks before you discharge a patient, all that good stuff that you need to be doing as a nurse, as a student nurse, as an upcoming nurse, are all the aspects that someone who is autistic is going to be able to do naturally. I've said in another video before, in a study with me video, I'll leave the link up here, but it's essential to find out what kind of learner you are. So I am a visual learner as well as a, I can't say the word, I think it's kinesthetic, because I wrote kinetic on my video and that was wrong, kinesthetic, I think it might be kinesthetic, correct me if I'm wrong, but I like to see things visually and physically be involved with things. So when I'm out on my clinical placements, that's where I thrive the most because I'm actually hands on and that actually helps me retain my information so much more and that is another great aspect to have being autistic because I retain information so well that I'm shown something, I go away and that just stays and it stores. Another great pro is attention to detail. Being autistic, I have very, very good attention to all the small details that the average person wouldn't pick up on, which again is fantastic for being a nurse because you are looking after a patient whose condition is potentially gonna start to slide. You need to be able to pick up on those signs really, really quickly. I'm not saying that all of the nurses who aren't autistic won't pick up on these, of course they will, that's why these nurses are out here are amazing, but it really helps the fact that we already naturally look for the smaller details in things. Being autistic helps me to have a very professional attitude because, again, it links into the black and white thinking. When I go out into my clinical placements, I know I have to have a professional attitude and I go in there and I am 100% professional. All the feedback that I've had from all my assessors all say the same thing. I have a very, very high professional standard once I'm out in placement. Not to say I don't when I'm not in placement, but obviously I know how to conduct myself to suit being in that situation. I go into placement and I know that I have to be switched on concentrated and focused on the task at hand because someone's life is in my hands. Time management is a good one as well. Not everyone's great with time management. It may not be down to being autistic. I think it is personally for me. And that's because I like routine. So I like things set. So I'm very, very organized. Lee always says to me, I'm the most organized person he knows. I have a to-do list. On top of the to-do list, I have a to-do list regarding the to-do list. I have my diary. I have notes everywhere. I have my whiteboard that I put notes on. I make sure that if there's an appointment or there's a bill to come out or I know that I'm supposed to be ringing someone or something needs to be followed up, I have it all written down. I have all the days planned out to do it and I do do it on those days so having time management is going to serve you well as a nurse because you need to get to your shift on time you need to be prepared to not leave your shift on time uh, that comes down to time management in a sense of making sure that everything else around you at home and in your other personal life is sorted before you go into work just in case these situations occur and you do have to stay later than, than planned it's all about how you manage your patients as well, having time management, knowing when to take their observations, keeping a clear mind of when, thinking of when you've got to go back and recheck on them, you've got to think about medications due, all of those things are really, really down to time management and using your noggin to keep a track of that. Meeting deadlines, we have set a deadline for our assignments, for our exams, and I never, ever, ever, ever either hand in on the day or late, ever. It's always early, always before the deadline, and I always make sure it's done in time. There are all the pros that I can think of for the moment. There are more, but obviously I don't want to drag this video out for hours and hours and hours, but they're the main ones that I can think of that I think are worth sharing. So on to the cons. It's not the nicest thing to talk about, but you know, the reality is there are pros and cons to being autistic and being a student or being a student nurse or being a nurse or upcoming nurse. <laughs> so I'm just going to run through a couple of the cons with you that I found that personally are my own cons. It's not going to be the same for everybody. So 
big one for me. I suppose it's a little bit like imposter syndrome and it's the feeling that I need to permanently prove that I'm capable of being a nurse and it's quite a sad situation and that is down to being autistic and worrying about the stigmas that are out there and what people think. Even though I'm working with other healthcare professionals, believe me, there are a lot of healthcare professionals that still are clueless to people who are autistic. Because if it's not their chosen field, they're not really gonna know that much about it. They might have basic knowledge about it, but that's as far as it goes. Yes, I worry quite a lot actually about how I'm coming across. Do they find me uncomfortable to work with? Do they want to work with me? Do they, you know, it's not a very nice thought and feeling to have, but it is one that I have all the time when I'm out on my practice placement. I permanently feel like I have to work that bit harder just to prove to my assessors that I'm out with and my mentors that I am capable, that just because I'm autistic, it doesn't mean that I can't be a nurse. Another kind of found is the big sensory issues that I have out on placement. Now, I have sensory issues every single day, which is why I wear flare audios, camera earbuds all the time, and have ear protection sources. All your senses are used when you're doing your nursing. You're gonna see a lot of things, you're gonna hear a lot of things, you're gonna feel a lot of things, you're gonna smell a lot of things. I know you're not gonna be eating a lot, but you know, you might taste something in the air. You know, I don't know if your sense of smell is that strong like mine sometimes. Sometimes I feel like I can actually taste what I can smell. So yes, all the senses are really heightened when you're out on placement. Routine change, I am a massive creature of habit. I need routine all the time. If I don't have my routine, then life falls apart for me at the seams and it really, really does. You go out to placement, you're starting a new routine, you're leaving behind the academic side of your university. Obviously, you're still gonna do academic work, but it's not just solely academics. Now going out into a place of work, working alongside others and helping look after patients. And that can go on for a number of weeks. We have one week that's a four week placement, one that's a five week and one that's a six week. And that's every year, apart from the last year, our last stretch is 12 weeks, which is a big one. When I start a new placement, that's a new routine. I'm leaving behind the old routine. I have to start up a new routine in a workplace. By the time I'm getting used to that routine at that place, that placement ends. And then I'm back to the academic side and I'm back to a different routine again. And then a couple of weeks later, I'm back out on another placement, another new routine, another new place to work. And it just goes on and on and on. And it's a really bit of a vicious cycle for me. Yes, routine change is a big, big problem for me. And it's something that I will have to continuously work on. But that is part and part of the parcel of being a student nurse. And I knew that before I signed up. Now, going back to the pro of meeting deadlines for work, as good as that is, it comes from putting a lot of pressure on myself. And this also links back into like the reduction side of things and rule side of things. So if I'm given a deadline, I don't want to go over that. I don't want to take the risk of leaving it till near then either, just in case I check through things and it's not right and then it takes me days to correct and then I miss the deadline. So I'm constantly living under a state of panic and I constantly live under a state of stress, which I know isn't good before anyone tells me, I know, but I've been like that my entire life. Once I get set something to do, I literally go out and start immediately and that is one of my biggest problems because I want to be able to get everything done in one go and that's not possible in nursing school. Another con that I kind of have and this stretches out for both placement and academic side as well and that is because I am high functioning autism, people don't understand just how difficult getting through a day is for me, never mind going to clinical placements and attending university where I've got all, again all the sensory issues going on. I was in uni the other day and we were only in there for three hours and there was a, a the door was open a little bit at the back of the room and there was people walking down the corridor and I'm like this every two minutes and people will, I could tell people were like looking thinking, you know, what's her problem? Why is she doing that? It's not even loud. So yeah, I do get some funny looks sometimes because I probably look like I'm being a bit of a spoiled brat, but it's not. I'm just struggling. So being high functioning is difficult because obviously I'm there and I can communicate with people and I can get through situations but that's down to masking. Masking does help me get through situations but it's also a bit of a double-edged sword because then people don't think that you struggle as much as you do. And a final comment I'm going to put out there because I don't want to go on too much because this video is already super super long is burnout. Now student nurses, nurses, we all get burnout. It is renowned for this profession. We tend to take our problems that we have out on our practice home with us because that's the kind of people we are we're very empathetic people yes i am autistic and highly empathetic i'm a huge empath so there's that stigma wiped clean very very difficult and burnout is bad enough being a student nurse and a nurse and a student but i get generalized burnout anyway from being autistic just from day-to-day -day life so having my generalized autistic burnout in combination with being a student nurse burnout sometimes oh my god it is unbearable and that's what leads to meltdowns because it does get way too much so long story short can you be a nurse if you're autistic 
are people going to want you to care for them if they know you're artistic? And my answer to this is yes, 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 yes. Times a million yeses. There is nothing stopping you if you are autistic from becoming a student nurse, any other profession in the entire world that you want to be, you can be it just because you're autistic, it won't stop you if that's what you really, really want to do. You would be surprised at the amount of times that patients bring up that they have family members who are autistic. I then will say, so am I, you know, and the faces genuinely light up. That's down to a couple of comments that I've had from that once I've disclosed that to patients who have disclosed that to me is that they say thank you for disclosing it to them because it's give them hope to see that I'm doing so well. They said they couldn't believe how good of a nurse I am. Yes, there are struggles along the way, but there are struggles in any aspect of life that you take if you're autistic because we are little square pegs, not designed to fit into a circular world, but here we are just making it work. You don't have to disclose it to anybody, but you can. I disclose it to people that I'm close to in my cohort and certain lecturers if I'm struggling with anything or if they ask. And I have an inclusion plan, I'll go on to support in a minute, but I have an inclusion plan that I get to take to my clinical placements. I don't have to share them if I don't want to. I never usually do, and that's because I like to see how I cope on the placement first. And once I get to know my mentor after the first day or so, I'll often say, yeah, and I'm, I'm autistic. And I've found that that helps me the most one, because I've got it off my chest. Two, because if I do struggle at any point, they're gonna be aware of it and it's not gonna make me feel uncomfortable to ask for help. I also found as well that once I disclosed that, they asked me a lot more about how it affects me, if there's anything that I want putting in place. They, they genuinely are so, so good once they've found out. Not that they don't treat me good beforehand, I mean, they just really do all they can to help me if needs be so i personally disclose it to my mentors when i get there i don't disclose it to all the staff unless i have a close relationship with them i don't disclose it to my patients unless they disclose something to me regarding that first and that's down to, down to preference if you want to tell everybody you can if you don't want to tell anybody you don't have to so really really quickly support that i've got in place i can only tell you what my personal experience is and my support that i get for those who are autistic and for those who have anxiety about going to placement you are allowed to go and visit these places if you bring up and you speak to someone at that placement and just let them know that you're the student nurse just ask them they will be more than happy to let you just turn up and I have a little look around the place what support do I have I am allowed extra time in exams I'm allowed an extension on any assignments I don't use either of them and that links back to me saying before how I am very deadline focused. I don't like to take extra time even though I should because it puts me at ease during an exam. But we get two hours for the exam anyway which I personally find I manage okay with. If I did feel like I was going to struggle of course I would say please can you put the extra time on. I think I get given it anyway. Um, but I just always finish in the right time anyway so I'd, I've never actually gone over the two hours to find out if they just automatically put it on or not. I'm not too sure. I do get assigned an academic tutor, again I've only ever used it once and that was just to do a catch up at the beginning of my first year just to um, introduce me to them and let, them, let me know what they did. I've not had to use that service since, they do message me all the time, I get emails all the time, they are very good with keeping on top of making sure that I'm okay. I do have an inclusion plan so that is something that I mentioned before about that I can take onto placement with me and that basically just puts things into place if I need more breaks than the average person or if I need to go out and have five minutes air, fresh air. Um, if I don't like to travel too far out of a certain area, a radius, um, things like that. If there's things that need to be put into place during my placements, that's where it'll all be on my inclusion plan. There are other means of support for people who are autistic and other disabilities as well. Mental health services, wellbeing services, services for just for autistic people in university. But most importantly, just remember whether you are autistic or not. If you are doing this nursing degree or anything else that's a stressful degree or anything else, at all that you are number one you come first you must look after you because if you don't look after you everything else will crumble around you you must put yourself first it's something i'm still working on myself something that i work on all the time just know that you are not alone in this whether you're autistic or not autistic it is a blooming hard degree and we are all in it together we are a big community and the amount of support we get and give is just next level so i'm so glad you're here on this journey with me i'm so glad that you let me on your journeys with you i'm gonna go and get ready to go and do the school run because it's nearly that time yes i've been talking for over an hour so it's gonna take me forever to edit make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more uploads and i will see you in the next one